If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another cutting tutorial. Now this cutting tutorial is extra special. This is the very first cutting tutorial for mine and Anna's new company, Pin It Up Patterns, and this is the first cutting tutorial of our very, very first pattern, the Up and Away Bag. I'm so excited to share this with you. Anna and I have worked very hard over a year to get this pattern out. We think it is amazing and we truly hope that you love it as much as we do. So, um, before we get started, this bag can be made in cottons, it can be made in leathers, it can be made in canvases, it can be made in vinyls. It is completely domestic machine friendly, of course, taking into account the materials you are using. Know the sensitivities of your machine when making those choices. I myself have made this in cottons, light vinyls, and heavier vinyls, and each bag is so pretty. Um, Interfacing in this bag, just the usual. We do use our main stabilizer as foam for this one. We show you, once we get into the tutorial and in the pattern, how to minimize the bulk of that foam in the seams with a really handy trick that Anna actually had taught me, and we will be doing it in all of our bags that use foam as a main stabilizer. If you're using cotton pieces, make sure you're backing them with a medium woven interfacing such as SF-101 or EB Fuse Lite. Um, and of course, we do also have a heavy stabilizer in the bottom, in the base, which can be Decaville Heavy or Peltex or something equivalent that may be where you're from. Um, minimal hardware in this, which is great. It's a great size bag. Um, I may be a little bit biased because I truly love, love, love our design and I can't wait to share it with you. Now, rather than going through the website and showing the designer or the tester photos there, before we get cutting, I have done a little bit of a video, um, like a picture collage to show off our amazing testers bags, which will hopefully spark inspiration in you when you're going to cut your up and away handbag. I can't wait to see it. Make sure after you've made it that you post it in our sewing group. All of that information will be down below in the description where you can join us on Facebook. And again, watch the cutting video. There's a meet the bags video as well as a full tutorial on this one as well. So how about we get to the beautiful bags that the testers have all done and then we will get to cutting this bag. So materials I am using in the bag today is for my lining fabric. I'm using this Starlight Metallics by Maywood Studios. I bought this at Dress Sew out of Vancouver. I just adore the shimmer of it. I'm going to be making this up and away bag with pearl vinyls from Galaxy Customs. So the colors I've chosen for my main color is a green bean green as well as obsidian pearl. Pearl vinyls are my utmost favorite vinyls from Galaxy Customs. Okay, so let me uh, get this all ready to go and we'll start cutting out our main fabric. So before we go any further, I also want to mention that for your exterior main, main pieces, you need to be using, uh, have at least 15 inches width in it. 
Um, that's why we recommend doing 18 inches. If you are a directional fabric, depending if it's a directional this way, you're gonna have to also make sure that you have enough fabric going that way. Now, the pearls at Galaxy Customs come in a 12 inch width. I really wanted to make it in this green bean green. This is a vinyl that Anna named after me for my favorite color. Get it? Bean, green bean. So I asked her to cut it a little extra wider for me so I could do it. So I want you to keep in mind that if you are doing, if you want to do pearls, the pearls are not quite wide enough at 12 inches and you may have to message Anna to put in a special request to get added length to it. That's what I had to do here. So, um, I just didn't want anybody to think that they could just go and buy pearls and they'd be the perfect width because they're slightly too short as they only come in 12 inches. So again, I have mine cut to 15 inches. I'm sure you could go ahead and request an 18 inch piece. Um, and on that note, this piece isn't long enough to get everything done. I also have a scrap piece, which I will be doing my um, handle accents with. So just to keep in mind there that your fabric is 18 inches minimal 15 inches wide in order to fit the main panel pieces on. Okay, so and going on, um, I like to go ahead and I like to draw my pattern pieces on the back of my, um, of my vinyls. This way I know I'm getting the most out of my vinyls that I possibly can. So I'm going to put my pattern piece down here and I'm gonna go ahead and draw it out. Make sure on the side here, you're not gonna be into any selvages. So you do not want those in your seams that could weaken it and I'm going to draw it out. So we need two of these exterior main panels. So I put little kind of blip marks at that fold line. Oops. Then I can put my pattern piece over, I'll line up my little blip marks there that I've made, and draw the second half. We need to draw two of these. and draw the second half. Okay, and then on page four is our cutting chart and we're working down the first column, exterior main, and I like to use my sew line air erasing pen to go ahead and mark off everywhere that I have already done. So I've done the two main pattern pieces exterior. And all I have left to do now is the strap accent. So I know I'm not gonna get that out of this piece here because I need them to be a certain length. Again, the lengths are um, in the pattern. I will not be giving any measurements in this cutting video. So you will have to get those measurements after purchasing your pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to cut out my two main pieces, and then I'm gonna go off camera and I am going to do my um, handle accents pieces, which are ruler measurements. Okay, so you'll go ahead and you'll cut out the other one this exact same way.
apologize for the noise upstairs. It sounds like my children are leaving the house. So those are my two exterior main pieces. I'll attach these to my pattern piece and I'm still going to have to cut out my lining and my medium woven interfacing. The foam stabilizer, do not cut that out just yet. We will be doing that in the sewing tutorial at some point. And at, on, we'll do that together and Coco says hi. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut my two strap bands out of my scrap piece of vinyl here that I have. Uh, again, follow, you'll need two of them. Follow the pattern measurements to draw those out and cut those out. All right, so after I showed you guys how to cut those pieces, I realized I made a mistake showing you how to cut my own pattern. So let's correct that now. You're gonna notice on the top of this main exterior panel, there is a fold line that says exterior main panel fold line. What I should have done is folded along that fold line for the exterior panel, and then use that to cut my exterior panel. And then when you went to do your lining panel, exactly like we do later on in the video, that line is folded up. So I'm just gonna correct that now. I have that folded down. And I'm just gonna lay my pattern piece along the top. And this is very important. This has to be shorter than the rest. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and draw my line across there. And then I will just go ahead and cut away that excess. So you'll have to do that for both of them or cut it correctly the first time, unlike what I did. So I will be cutting that off to make that shorter. So once again, for the exterior panels, you fold it the dotted line. For the lining panels, you open it up and cut that way. All right, so I went ahead and I cut it out, cut it, cut out my handle accents, which are again, are in the pattern for the measurements for those. And that is all we need for our main color is the two exterior mains and the two handle accents. The rest is all done in the, um, the accent color. Okay, so working down our cutting list, we're now in column two. I'm gonna uh, hop on over down to uh, the handles. So what's great about this pattern is for all of the accents, it's great for a, strap, a scrap buster if you have a bunch of scraps of a color. So I have like two large scraps of the Obsidian Black Pearl that I will be using. Um, you just have to make sure that they're long enough for the handles or, or what have you. So the handles as well are a measurement in the pattern, but I'm gonna share them with you because they're just your typical shoulder strap length or whatever. They are one inch handles. Um, so I'm doing two of them to 30 inches, so a shoulder bag length. So I'm gonna use this wonderful Mormino ruler that I got at So Magical Expo. It is so perfect for drawing out straps. I was so excited to get it. So this ruler is 24 inches, but I need to go to 30 inches. So I'm just going to, just like when we do on the fold, kind of go to the blips, make little blips at the end. And I need to add five more inches on. So I'm moving the five inch mark over towards my little blips there and drawing out the rest of the length. And now all I have to do is draw out my strap. So I'm gonna go first thing, I'm gonna do a four inch line to split this piece into two. So we're mainly making two pieces that are four inches by 30 inches. And while we're here, just to make our life easier, we're going to do our halfway mark for when we make these straps down the middle with a dotted line. Try to do all the marking when you're cutting out and it just saves a little bit more time when it comes to sewing it all together. Same with on the other one. And then we're gonna see what other pieces I can fit onto the scrap piece. Okay, so there's my two handles. I can cross that off of my list. I am done my two and I'm doing the long handles. Let's see here. So I have all of my exterior pieces all cut out here. 
I'm not going to be able to get the bottom on there, so that'll be on another piece. Same with my gusset, but I can probably get all of these overlays. Now, keep in mind, the overlays have to be done with a non-fraying fabric as their edges are left raw. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these out. Here's my pen. So this is the lining zipper overlay. I'm going to actually put my straight edge along the straight edge of the handle so I can cut that all in one swoop. Draw down the center as well because we will be cutting out the center part as well. Oopsies. This one side. So that is one. That's the lining zipper overlay. I don't know. This one we're not going to quite get on because of the tip, so that'll be on the other piece as well. So we need a little bit more this way, but we can get this rear applique on here. I'm actually going to use pattern weights to help hold this piece of paper in place. Now these applique pieces, I am going to do the optional edge coat on all of the raw edges. You don't have to do the edge coating, but I will be. And if you need tutorial for that, we do have that in my Bag Makers 101 playlist linked below. But we'll talk about that in the tutorial, the sewing tutorial. mark off what we have done here so we don't lose track. So we have drawn out the rear applique and the lining zipper overlay. Okay, so I do know that I can also get some of the measurement, measurement cuts out of this. So I'm gonna go off camera and I am going to draw onto here my four strap connectors and my slip pocket accent. Actually, I don't know if I'm gonna, I might be able to get the slip pocket accent out of this piece, we will see. So I'm gonna draw those out and then I will come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I did manage to get my four connector pieces and I've also drawn a dotted line down the center of those and I did get my slip pocket accent on this piece as well. So I'm just gonna slide this out of the way. I'm gonna take my other scrap of vinyl that I have of the obsidian and we are going to draw out the rest of the pieces. So we are going to start with the bottom panel. And draw it out. like so, right bottom on it, and then we're going to need two gusset panel pieces, so it's going to fit perfect in here. Again, these call for foam stabilizer, don't worry about cutting out that foam stabilizer just yet, we will do that all during the tutorial as we have a special way of cutting out the foam. That's one and two. Make sure you have the direction of your fabric going the right way if it is directional. We have it marked on top here so you know which way is up. So 
So it's my gusset panel, gusset, gusset. Mark these off on my list as I go. I got my bottom, I got my two side gussets. Now, keep in mind, if you don't want to cut out the pattern pieces, we have also for these square pieces um, provided the ruler measurements. So for all of these measured pieces, if you don't want to print it off, you don't have to. You can definitely do the ruler measurements for sure. Okay. Next. Kind of going through to see what I can use on the scrap piece. Um, let me see something. Okay. I'm going to draw out my applique piece here. I'm going to do it at the top here because I'm going to save this bottom part, I believe, is going to be long enough for doing my zipper bands. The zipper bands are a measured piece, so I will not be doing that on camera, but I'll draw this one out first. So my front applique, I can use some things to hold it in place there. Actually, I'm going to use some hair clips. So as you can see, these accent pieces are amazing. If you have scraps of that accent color, you can definitely use up some of those odd shaped pieces. Okay. I'll grab another one right here. We want to make sure this shape is really good because this is like the focal point of the bag. Again, all these appliques are raw edge, so they have to be a non-fraying fabric. Um, so that is, I've done my slip pocket accent, front exterior applique, and all I have left to do are my two zipper band accents. So I'm just gonna turn the camera off, quickly draw those out, and, and then we will cut all of this out. Okay, so here we go. Here are my two zipper bands all drawn out, and now we can go ahead and we can cut these out. So, see, two scrap pieces of vinyl, all used up, amazing. Okay, so you can go in with scissors. I'm a rotary cutter girl, so I'm just going to go in with my rotary cutter. I've marked all of these off of my cutting chart. Now, if you are using a cotton, you will want to back these with a medium woven interfacing. So my two zipper bands, put them in the done pile. And I apologize for the sound of my rotary cutter. I really need to buy another one. The round part goes click click because I think there's a I don't know it's broken still works though and I'm going to go into this V here with my scissors just so I get a really nice point This is one piece that if you want to do edge coating, you edge coat all around this. You don't have to edge coat these two short sides, but you do have to edge coat the long sides. So that is my front applique. All done. My two gussets. pattern piece and I'm going to put this into the pile 
my lining to be cut lining stuff because I will have to cut lining for my gusset panels. Here's my bottom. Now I have already gone and cut out my decoval heavy for the bottom of this as per the pattern measurements in the cutting chart. And this you will be fusing onto the bottom outside of the seam allowances like so. Okay. So those are my bottom pieces done. To the interface pile. Slip pocket accent. I will be, again, it's completely optional. I will be edge coating the two long raw edge wrong long sides of this okay so that's to be edge coated if you're edge coating This is high. My house is extra noisy today. I apologize. So is my street. I don't know what's going on. So those are my two handle pieces done. Do my four connectors. They're just little itty bitty guys. Two, two three, four. Put them together. And then, now these two are very similar. You wanna make sure you don't mix them up. The shorter one is for the lining and the longer one is for the exterior. It will make a difference. And I will be edge coating on the shorter one, all the raw edges. And on the longer one, I won't be edge coating the two short edges, but all the other ones I will be. If you're edge coating. scissors to the corners so I don't go past them too much. Okay, so again, make sure you don't mix these up so it's good to keep them with the pattern pieces. This is for my rear applique. This is going into the 2B edge coated pile and my lining zipper overlay. Double check on our cutting chart, cutting chart, cutting chart. 
And that is everything for the exterior cut out. And now I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we'll come back and we will cut out the lining. Okay, so I have my lining fabric here. So my lining pieces, because I am using cotton, I will be backing them with EB Fuse Light from Mline Bags, which is a medium woven interfacing, similar to SF101 or any medium woven type interfacing. So I have all my pattern pieces here that I had exteriors cut out for that are calling for lining pieces. So we're going to start with those first. I'll start with my main exteriors. I'm going to cut them both at the same time. So again, Keep in mind, directional, make sure your direction is going in the right way. Mine is solid. I don't have to worry about a directional cut at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my main exterior pattern piece and it's on the fold. So I am going to fold this up onto itself, wrong sides together until it, my pattern piece fits. You can cut them separate as well. I like to do them both at the same time. It just saves a little bit of time. It's a little faster. Okay, so we just wanna make sure it's gonna fit everywhere. So we have it on one fold here, but we wanna cut on a double fold. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be right about here. I'm gonna fold this over to create that double fold. See there, see how we have two folds? One, two, that means we can cut two pattern pieces at the same time on the fold. Okay, because I gotta remember I had that there, okay. So I'm gonna lay this down, make sure my fold is nice and even. I'm gonna make sure where my army is here that there is enough, and there is. I'm gonna finger press these folds really good, put my pattern piece on the fold, and then use some of these hair clips to Keep those folds nice and compressed so we don't get too much excess fabric from being folded over. I'm gonna use some pattern weights to hold all this down. Make sure it's all nice and flat. And then I'm gonna go in and cut these two out. right we'll have two pieces on the fold So we can put that with our exterior pieces. I'm gonna put this in the 2B interface pile because I do need to cut my woven interfacing and put it on my lining pieces. Again, do not baste the foam on yet. We will do that at a later step in the pattern. So that is my two exterior main panels done. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can use some of this scrap that was in the middle between the arms. I think I can get my base piece out of this. So I'm going to grab my base pattern piece. I'm going to lay it down. Grab some pattern weights to hold my pattern piece. Again, there are measurement cuts in the pattern as well, if you prefer to do that. So this will have to be interfaced. And again, fuse the decal heavy onto the back of the exterior piece and the woven interfacing onto the back of the lining piece. Do not worry about foam just yet. Into the 2D interface pile. And I think I'm gonna get lucky, possibly. I'll be able to get one of my gusset pieces out of this. So again, trying to use up as much of the fabric as I can. So we need two of these gussets. 
one. Kind of here, another oblong piece, so we will use it. And cut the second one. Okay, into the 2B interface pile. What else do we have? So we're going to go down our list. And we have our two main panels. We have our bottom. We have our two side gussets. Now all we have are measured pieces. So we need four zipper pocket lining pieces and the slip pocket piece. I'm going to go off camera and cut those as I do not, I cannot share those measurements. You need to get the pattern to get those measurements. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here is our slip pocket piece and then we should have four equal zipper pocket lining pieces and that is it so all that's left to do is cut out the woven interfacing and to fuse on the woven interfacing and the decoval heavy and that's cutting done that's it, that's all. What did you guys think of that? I hope that you enjoyed the cutting process. There aren't too many pieces to cut out. It's a pretty fast cutout, which I think is awesome. Um, yeah, so make sure you, you watch the sewing tutorial after this and join our Pin It Up Patterns sewing group. We definitely want to see your makes and your versions of this pattern. If at any time you did like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can always buy me a coffee link down below. Until the next one, I'll catch you guys later. Bye!